Crossplane and Cubevela are both CNCF projects that are focused on partly overlapping, but for the most part, different objectives. Crossplane has providers through which we get custom resource definitions or CRDs and controllers that allow us to manage infrastructure, services, and applications, no matter whether they are in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, or anywhere else. Crossplane has composite resource definitions or XRDs that allow us to create new CRDs with controllers that simplify management of grouped resources, resources that form cohesive group of something, define something. Kubewell implements open application model, which from certain perspective is similar to Crossplane compositions. On top of that, Kubevela has policies, workflows, and quite a few other features. Now, today I will not go into details how Crossplane or Kubevela work. If that's what you're interested in, I already made some videos about both. If you're interested to know Kubevela in more detail, watch that one. If you're not familiar already with it, and since I'm not explaining Crossplane, if you're not uh, Crossplane Ninja, then you might want to watch one of those videos or any video on this channel, on Upbound channel. Today, for a change, we are going to do something completely different. We are going to try to combine those two projects and see whether we can get some mutual benefits. Let's start by taking a look at an example of a cross-plane composite claim. So let me output example skates uh, AWS EKS, for example. And here you can see that we have a new resource type called cluster claim. And within the specs, we are defining uh, the ID, composite selector, which composition should be used through this claim because it doesn't have to be AWS. I have implementations for Azure, Google Cloud, SIO, DigitalOcean, and so on and so forth. And we have a few parameters like what is the size of the nodes, medium in this case, what is the minimum number of nodes, three, and so on and so forth. And we have write connection secret to reference with the name A team EKS, which means that once the cluster is created, there will be a secret with cube config so that we can connect to that cluster and do whatever we are supposed to do in a cluster. Now, if I would like to define something very similar to Kubevela, uh, actually, let me show you a file. I have it in examples Kubevela EKS solo.yaml. Uh, I have application kind of the resource. So Kubevela does not allow us to create different resource types, resource kinds, which is uh, downsides of sorts, but nevertheless. And we have one component which says, hey, this is the name, the type, of the component is Kubernetes, and there are a few properties, same properties like we saw with Crossplane before. So this is equivalent. The result would be the same, except that Crossplane allows us to define custom resources, new custom resources, while Kubevela always works with applications. And when I say applications, it can be anything, but application is the resource type. And by the way, before I continue, let me say that uh, there is a gist with all the commands and all the references and the link to the gist is in the description. So I'll go and check it out if you want to reproduce what I'm doing. Now, if I would like to apply this Kubevela manifest, I can do that with kubectl namespace. In this case is a team. I want to apply whatever is defined in that file and Kubevela uh, application was created. I will show in a moment or two how I did what I did so far. I want to, for now, actually, I want to see to show the effect of applying that resource. So if I want to see the status uh, of something applied through Kubevela, I can, for example, execute Vela, whatever is the namespace, and then status of a resource. In this case, that resource is called a team EKS. And I can see different information like, hey, what's it all about? What is the workflow? Uh, the steps of the workflow? What are the services? Right now, only one. And what are the traits? I have no traits. I will introduce traits later, very, very soon, because traits are really helpful in this context. And I will explain why in a moment. I can also retrieve all Kubel applications by executing kubectl, namespace a team, get applications. And right now I have only one. Normally I would have many more. Uh, there is a name, there is the component involved in that application, the type of the application, phase, it's running, health, and so on and so forth. But since this Kubel application uses behind the scenes Crossplane cluster claim, the one that I showed at the very beginning, I can list those as well. And there you go, I have Crossplane cluster claim uh, called A team 
EKS, the same name, uh, with statuses, right? Now, in this case, I see more detailed statuses than if I go directly with Cubevela, even though Cubevela shows more information with the status. Here I can see a custom field that I created myself because this is a custom resource uh, with the cluster name, the control plane status, it's creating it, and node pool and the status and so on and so forth. So I can customize the output of what uh, Crossplane shows me for each of the different resources or custom resources that I created. Similarly, I can retrieve all the managed resources, those that are managed by Crossplane through the composition that I created by executing kubecut to get managed. And here I can see everything, uh, subnets, VPCs, node groups, all the objects created in that cluster and so on and so forth. So this is much more detailed because unlike Cubevela, uh, Crossplane allows us to see all the resources involved on individual basis. It is not really a single resource like uh, application, right? Uh, but this is now not comparison of the, of the two. Uh, what I want to show is how we can join the two tools. But so far, everything I showed really provided no tangible benefits. If I just take a uh, composition from Crossplane and wrap it inside of Cubevela application, I get nothing except a wrapper on top of something, right? But there is a much better use case, which I'm going to explain in a second. But before I do, let me show how I wrapped Crossplane inside of Cubevela. And the definition is in examples, Cubevela component TKS Q. Cubevela uses Q language to define uh, what we want, which has upsides and downsides, potentially more flexibility, but on the other hand, not discoverable um, by Kubernetes API. I cannot uh, explain uh, the definitions of something. So ups and downs, but again, this is not a comparison. I just want to show uh, what I did and how I did it before I jump into the real deal. So in this Q file, I defined, hey, basically the same thing I would define in Crossplane. Uh, there is a template with an output. It has a JSON version of a Kubernetes manifest instead of YAML. And that JSON has certain parameters and certain contexts. And those parameters are defined at the bottom. Again, I'm not explaining how Cubella works, but I want to get to the point and show the benefits of using both of them together. Now, let's say that I do not want only a cluster that has everything I need, like VPCs, Internet Gateways, and so on and so forth. That's easy. Crossplane does it better than anything, and you don't need any additional tool for that. What I want is to have optional components. Let's say that I want to optionally, not for everybody, enable the cluster to be GitOps friendly, and that I want additional node groups uh, inside that cluster. But remember, this is optional. So this is not something that every cluster should have, but opt-in situation. How would they do that with Crossplane alone? And I have everything defined in two files in uh, AWS EKS GitOps YAML and uh, AWS EKS node group .yaml. So if I want to have a cluster, a composition that has optional components into it, I would need with Crossplane three different compositions. Uh, because Crossplane does not really allow conditional loops and all the things that other tools might allow. That's by design, by the way, but not available today. That would change in the very near future, but I cannot talk about it yet. Anyways, I have a manifest or a couple of manifests with three different resources. One is cluster claim, just as before, and then I have a separate uh, claim for GitOps and yet another, this time is not claim, but not group because I do not need a composition for a single resource, uh, unlike others that have multiple resources. So three different definitions, uh, and then I can use only one or all three of them or any combination uh, cluster plus something else. Now, this is a bit tedious, maybe not necessarily so user friendly because you do not know which compositions work with which other compositions. And uh, there's a lot of YAML to be written from user perspective, not from the designer perspective. And that's where Cubevela can help. So let me show yet another uh, application, Cubevela application modification of the previous one. And this time it's called EKS GitOps node group YAML. And the very beginning, the top is the same. It is called A Team EKS, and it has the same component as before. But what is new here is traits. Traits are like adding additional capabilities 
uh, to something. And in this case, I have two traits. One is GitOps uh, with certain properties and another one is EKS node group with yet another round of properties. So this is where Cubella uh, shows certain advantage when combined with crossplane, because I can wrap different compositions into Cubella components and traits. Components are like a big composition, think of it, and traits are the additional capabilities that work only with specific components. And if each of those components or traits are crossplane compositions, then we have a potentially winning combination. We can have a flexibility, Cubella flexibility of combining components and traits and cross-plane advantages of using compositions. So let me apply that with kubectl. By the way, I would be using GitOps from the get-go, but I want to make it easy now instead of pushing things to Git. So kubectl namespace a team, I want to apply whatever is defined in the file examples and then kubevela and uh, EKS uh, GitOps not group YAML, right? The file that I showed a moment ago. So let's take a look at Vela status one more time. We have the stuff that we had before, like uh, the about section and workflows and services. But the new thing here is that we have two additional traits, which is GitOps and EKS node group. And if we switch to crossplane, I can see proper resources that were created through that uh, Vela application, which is, uh, let's say, QCATL, namespace A team. I want to see all the GitOps claims. There we are. And I can retrieve all the node groups. And uh, I have two, one that was created with a cluster initially and another one that is being created right now. The status, the ready field is false, so it takes some time until the node group is created. And if I retrieve all the managed resources, you can see uh, without going now into details that all the additional resources in my Kubernetes cluster that uh, represent different AWS and Kubernetes resources and what's not are all there. So how did I do all that? Uh, let's take a look at trade GitOps Q file from Kubevela. And over here, you can see that I didn't do anything special. I just wrapped a cross-plane composition into Kubevela, but in this case, Kubevela trait. What matters here, apart from saying that this is a trait, is that I define that it applies only to specific workloads, in this case to Kubernetes. So if we cannot combine this trait with other Vela components, because this is designed only to work with that one, it could be with others. And within the templates, I have output that says, hey, uh, GitOps uh, should be this and that, which is JSON representation or Q representation, which is JSON essentially on steroids uh, with additional parameters, same parameters that I use in the composition called GitOps, crossplane composition called GitOps. And similarly, let's output uh, trait EKS node group Q, and it follows the same pattern. It is Vela trait, uh, it is uh, associated only with Kubernetes component, and in the output, I have the JSON that represents that crossplane composition. So, what did I get? by combining those two. On one hand, uh, cross-plane compositions are much more powerful because they have features that simply do not exist in Vela, but there are a few things that does exist in Vela and by design do not exist in cross-plane, like traits, which is adding additional, combining different components with different uh, additional capabilities called traits. And that uh, would be complicated, if not impossible today in crossplane. The change to crossplane that will enable something like that is coming. But right now, if you want to have something similar to conditionals uh, to add addition, to combine different compositions, Cubevela might give us that with components and traits attached to those components.